Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning into this video. After swearing multiple times over that I was done recording takes. Okay, everyone, disclaimer, this is the six millionth time that I've tried to record this video. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with it. Whatever happens, happens with this video now. Uh, unfortunately, on my last intro, I did notice that I had a piece of almond skin in between my front teeth and I just I couldn't I had to break my promise once again so this is officially the six million one hundred and second time that I've tried to film this video welcome to the thanks I made it knitting podcast my name is Emma today in this little video I wanted to talk about buying yarn on eBay something that I've done quite a bit and I have a few thoughts and tips and tricks. And I just wanted to show you some of the yarn that I've purchased and some of the items that I've made with that yarn. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, and sorry, my dog is crying at my feet. Come here, come on, come on. If that sounds like something that you would be interested in, feel free to sit back and continue to watch the video. You don't have to do anything. The video will start soon and you can enjoy it. And I've done all the hard work and all the editing. So I'm just going to put this video at the very front and then you can watch the video about all the yarn that I bought on eBay. I'll be showing you some of the skeins of yarn that I've purchased on eBay, the total price that I paid for them on eBay, and then the market value of those skeins where I could find that information from like the actual sellers pages just so that you can get a feel for the deals that are out there if you're willing to look for them. Buying on eBay, buying on eBay requires a little bit of discipline, uh, both like internal discipline and just like pounding the pavement of the e-commerce websites. This actually sneak peek is some video footage that I tried to record like a real streamer where it's me in the corner and I'm showing you my eBay page. The audio on that was literal dog shit. So I'll probably not put in the 40 minutes of video that I recorded for that, but I'll maybe save some of the best uh, clips for you from that footage. Essentially, I am going to turn this into a voiceover now. I'll be showing you my yarns that I've purchased on eBay and some of the sweaters that I've already made using yarns that I've purchased on eBay. First things first, when you're buying on eBay, there is an overwhelming amount of product out there. So it's not, you know, if you're not finding things that you like on eBay, most likely it's not for a lack of product availability. This is where I think it's really important to take a little bit of time before you even get on the website and consider what it is that you're looking for and you're purchasing. Are you buying with a specific project in mind? Do you know that there's a weight of yarn that you reliably use in projects and you just want to build up a stash of that? Are you looking for other people's yarn scraps for a scrappy project? Are you looking for like one skein or two skeins to complete a project that you have already started. So that's the first like groundwork stuff that you need to get out of the way to determine how to best set up your eBay queries. Which brings me to my next point. Learn how to use an eBay query. I'll put in some quick footage here of me showing one of the eBay queries that I use. So in eBay, when you create your saved search, but within this yarn lot, saved search, you can query by weight, by fiber content, by color. If you really enjoy a limited palette or if you're searching for something very specific. And in this query, you can filter for fiber content, fiber weight. Um, you can also filter, although I haven't used it for yarn like format. I don't know a ball shape like if it's on a cone or if it's in a hank i don't use that one but the point is you can get as granular as you wish with these ebay searches also you can see behind me my dog quick interruption is 
going feral. So that's really fun for us right now. Save the search. And then when somebody posts yarn for sale or for bid, matching that criteria, those criteria that you've set, you will either get a push notification or you'll just be, they'll all be grouped together for you in, an, in a section of your app. It's really helpful and it prevents that information overload that I think a lot of people dislike. I think that that's what a lot of people dislike when they're buying on eBay is the just the, the pure avalanche of information that gets presented to you. After you have your saved searches set up, the next tip that I have for you is using your watch list to your advantage. So your watch list, adding items to your watch list is done by clicking the little heart um, <laughs> button that's on the eBay listing. It, just think of it as like liking a pro, uh, an item or saving it for later. But when you do this, not only does it again help you cut down the sheer volume of items that are on eBay by just being able to go to a list of things that you have already expressed interest in, but it allows the sellers to potentially send you discounts on those items. And it will, if, if the item is a bid item, an item for bid, you'll be notified when that bid is coming to an end. So that can potentially save you some money and also it'll, it'll let you swoop in at the very end and steal it from somebody else. My next tip is another like foundational holistic tip within your own mindset. So I think it's really important to set a, a maximum bid price for yourself before you bid on an item or before you make a purchase. Bid on eBay, that's a commitment to buy. So you really don't want to be just like bidding on things because you think that they're cute. You need to be, I, I feel like it's wise to go in and and pretend that the bid is like the money is going out of your account already. So I wouldn't bid on something that you're not comfortable than spending that money on. Kind of in conjunction with that last tip, I think it's also very important though to not get too attached to any item that you bid on on eBay. 90% of the time, there's gonna be other people out there who also want that item and potentially, most likely, who are also willing to spend more money on that item than you are. Not letting yourself get too attached or swept up in ideas about what you're gonna make with the yarn when you get it before you've actually purchased it will help prevent you from getting into any bidding wars that maybe are unadvisable because you won't feel quite so slighted when somebody else is trying to purchase the same item that you are. It's important to note that eBay is a very active community. There will always be something else that is posted. Missing out on one bid for one product or 15 products or 100 products that you've bid on does not, like, there's no, it's never going to be the end of the world, right? I think is the, is the best way to think about it. It's just, you don't want to, don't, don't let yourself get swept up in the tornado of suddenly spending $50 more than you initially wanted to just because Joe Schmo or Joanne Schmoan also wanted that item. eBay is also a really great place to purchase mixed lots of yarn or reclaimed yarn. So a mixed lot would be like four skeins of Brooklyn tweed yarn or, and they're all different colors, or six skeins of like Two of them are Cascade 220, and one of them is a uh, hand-dyed merino sock yarn, et cetera, et cetera. It, think of it as like a mass D stash. So if you are just broadly trying to build up your stash of yarn, that could be potentially a really great option for you. If you're more like reduce, reuse, recycle minded, the reclaimed yarn searches are really interesting. I think that the reclaimed yarn searches are really interesting. Essentially, there are people out there who are very skilled at unraveling existing projects, many of them like store-bought items, and then cleaning and balling up the yarn and selling it on eBay. So there are like, so sometimes you can find like cashmere yarn or silk yarn. A lot of times you can find also just like cotton and acrylic yarn though. And that is, you know, you're buying secondhand and you're reusing. So which I think is very neat. And the, unraveling a sweater is a lot of work. 
I have done it and it's not a, it's not a fun process for me at least, but some people seem to really enjoy it. And this is a great way to help them reduce their stash of yarn. My final tip would be just read the description of the yarn that you're purchasing. I have had some flops in my own yarn purchases on eBay. I would say two, two, purchases that I've made have just really not worked out for me for a number of reasons. And reading the description of the listing will save you a lot of headache. In addition to that, in addition to reading the description, check out the reviews for the seller on eBay. If they get really great reviews, you can feel a lot more confident in, you can feel a lot more confident in, in, in knowing that your purchase will be, uh, not a scam <laughs> or at least you know not intentionally misleading something to check out in those descriptions you know is it from a non-smoking home or if that's something that's concerning to you or do they have pets if you have allergies sometimes in the descriptions they will indicate if they have other yarn for sale in which case you know you can go check out their profile maybe find some other hidden gems that you weren't querying for eBay has a learning curve, as most things do, but I cannot deny um, the deals that I found on yarn and fiber on eBay, and also it's fun. I like thrifting. eBay is like online thrifting. You don't even have to leave your bed or the couch or your office, and you can find some really fun things. If you use any of these tips or if you have any of your own, I would love to hear about them in the comment section. If you, or if you want to share any of your other yarn thrifting tips, again, love to hear about them. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see y'all next time. Bye. And checking out their other listings. Sometimes it's garbage, like 270 used wine corks and, <laughs> Jesus. and other times, you know, there's some nice stuff. <laughs> Am I recording in slow motion? How do I know? One second.